Hello, my name is Thiago Silva, and today I'm going to present a workshop for ataxic analysis that Dr. Ben Berman and I created. Ataxic is a technique used in molecular biology to assess the genome-wide chromatin accessibility. So pretty much we're going to have a peak if the region is accessible, like open. And what happened was that in 2017, uh, Ryan Courses created an improvement over that protocol, and now we were able to derogate frozen tissues. Uh, as a follow-up of that study, um, Ryan Courses and Jeff Granja, as a part of Dr. Greenleaf and Dr. Chang's lab, they profiled the chromatin accessibility of the 23 human cancer types from TCJ, the Cancer Genome Atlas, in 410 tumor samples. We had almost two replicates for each tumor sample. Uh, and with that data, you can perform several analyses. The major aim of this workshop is for us to like help the researchers, users, or students to understand where the data is, what the data is, what they need, um, which information they need to do data analysis. Uh, and then we're going to do a, like a hands-on example using esophageal adenocarcinoma and esophageal squamous carcinoma. So we're going to look for regions that are open in one cancer type versus the other. And then we're going to visualize the results as volcano plot and a heat map. Uh, there is a link for these workshops and it's available, it's public, it's free in uh, these RPUB pages. So we have the table of contents where you can just walk through all the steps. You can just click and, um, and see it. So here we have all the links for the science paper. We have a link for where the data is. Um, and we have everything I'm going to talk. We have all the R codes to perform um, several um, data analysis, as I said, like the volcano plot, etc. Okay. Um, so first of all, we have for this workshop uh, a subset of the GDC data, the Genomic Data Commons uh, website, where um, it's available in this Google Drive folder. If you go to the data folder, you have um, a couple of files that are either like reduced size. So these big, big files, you just got chromosome 20 for a couple of samples. Um, and some of the, the other ones, they are inside a zip folder with all the cancer types. You just got one inside. So we don't have to wait for um, the data to be downloading. And also it's going to be faster for you to just test it, right? Um, okay, the so first step is understanding the data. What are the peak sets that we have? Um, so first of all, this data has been aligned against the human genome um, assembly, HG38, and it's available in this web page from the Genomic Data Commons, the Chromatin Accessibility Landscape of Primary Human Cancers. So we have like a link for the article, you have all this data supplemental files, and then you have the data that you can use for um, your data analysis. These are open ones, you also have the the private ones that are available, I think, for the main uh, GDC web portal today. Okay, great. Um, so first of all, understanding what there are the peak sets. Um, so for understanding this, you can go into the supplemental material. Let's see, yeah, from the science paper. So again, supplemental materials for the chromatin accessibility landscape of primary human cancers. And that data is described from page six until page eight, okay? Um, so I'm just going to read you and maybe explain a little bit. So they did a peak calling for 796 ataxic profiles. Again, we had like 410 samples. We had two replicates almost. So that's why you have this number. For the 23 cancer types, and there was a decision to keep like fixed width um, Peaks, okay, so they have every peak has the same width. Uh, the main reason was making the count based and multi focus analysis less biased large peaks, and that's fine, that's easier actually to handle fixed width peaks, okay. And also, 
when you have like large data sets um, merging the peaks, you're going to have like a union that can lead to many peaks being merged over one very large peak. Um, and like if you had like a big one and like very small ones, like imagine have a big one for breast cancer and very small ones for like, I don't know, colon cancer and another one for esophageal cancer. If you just merge into a big one, you're going to lose the ability to resolve independent peaks. So what they did is like, okay, define the summit and just create a window around it. Uh, it's 200 base pairs downstream, 200 upstream, and then like you have this final width of 501 base pairs. Okay. Um, one thing was like the samples, the peak calls were affected by the data quality. Okay. And also the read depth. So if you have like better data quality or have to, you're going to have like peaks with higher score, you might find more peaks and then you had to uh, somehow normalize that data. Um, so now we're going to go through some of the data sets we have. Uh, the first thing they did was this, um, they created an iterative removal procedure of the overlapping peaks. Okay, so we got one sample and then you started doing this, get the most significant peak, okay? And then any peak that direct overlaps with that peak, it's removed. So we have like one peak that's like more significant, there is a small one overlapping, remove the small one, okay? Uh, you're going to do this until you iterate to the next most significant peak. Okay, yeah, so like you did the first one, there is anyone overlapping? No, go to the next one and continue doing that until all peaks have been either capped or removed due to direct overlap with a more significant peak, okay? So this is what they're going to call a sample peak set. And this is going to be used for the next peak sets that are available in GDC. So this one is not available. Um, so one of the things, as I said, they found was that the samples varied in read depth and quality. And due to that, the MAC2 score also varied. Um, and the way they could compare samples was performing a post calling normalization, okay? Um, because like you need to do the calling and then you know how many peaks you have and um, there was no normalization you could do before that, okay? So they develop a method to normalize peak significant scores um, across samples and cancer types, okay? So what they do is like, get the max two score minus log two p-value for each sample and convert it by score per million by dividing each individual peak score by the sum of all peak scores in a given sample, okay, divided by one million. So if the sample has more peaks, um, you're going to like normal, normalize uh, all the peaks based on, on that, okay? Um, the main reason was by, for doing that, like if the sample quality or depth increase, the number of peaks called is going to increase and the significance is also going to increase. Uh, so that's a way you could control for like, if you have better quality, you, you don't want to have a bias toward those having like a biggest score just because the sample has a better data quality. Um, okay. So using this normalized data now, we are going to create the cancer type specific set, okay? So get each normalized sample, let's say for breast cancer. Um, and we are going to define which are the breast cancer type specific peak sets containing all the reproducible peaks observed in an individual cancer type, okay? So get all the breast cancer uh, sample peak sets, normalized ones, and then you're going to com combine it into a cumulative peak set and trim for the overlap using the same procedure above. So, okay, get all the, the samples. Let's say we have three samples, then merge the peaks, okay, into one, and then do that same iterative removal procedure we did. You just get the highest, the most confident peak, anyone that are overlapping that's less significant, just remove it and just go on to then. Um, and then they define the reproducible peaks of this merged peak set 
as uh, yeah so to identify these reproducible peaks from the merged peak set you have the individual sample peak set were overlapped with this and you needed to see those peaks in at least two samples and with a score of at least five um, score per million of at least five okay so they call that okay that's a reproducible peak because at least in two of my um, replicates we have that peak and we have like a minimum score there as a cutoff great that's what we have for our cancer type specific peak set and then the next one is the pain cancer peak set okay so pretty much we're going to get all the cancer types and then try to identify like I have imagine a certain region I have two peaks but one is very high for breast cancer the other one's like a little bit low for colon cancer so we're going to say okay that region is breast cancer specific um, that's the whole idea um, so we are going to create this pain cancer peak set which is um, Reproducible peaks from all cancer types that could be used for cross-cancer comparisons. Um, the first thing they did was they had to renormalize the score per million for each cancer type specific. Uh, the major reason was like if the cancer type has more samples or higher quality, uh, they would very likely has a disproportion in the unit peak set. Um, so they did like a renormalization for each pain cancer set and then again they, they merged the result, the, the, all the cancer specific types, they merged them, they did the same iterative overlap removal and then they just kept the ones that were like, they're going to annotate just the ones that are my, more um, confident, okay, the higher score. I'm going to show a little bit later the, the data um, so I think understanding the data is the most difficult part okay so if you go to the GDC web page uh, you have all these files so just going through the first one is the taxic count matrices uh, you have like a readme file and explain a little bit of this data but just going through uh, the first four ones here is one it's the pain cancer peak set okay um, normalized counts so one is RDS and the other one's tax file but the data is the same then you have the raw counts so this one is not the normalized ones and then you have uh, the cancer specific count matrix and the normalized ones so here just giving an example if I get a zip file I have like ACC raw counts and then the other one I would have like I think log2 normalized counts etc then we have the peak calls, um, so this is defining as not the counts but like the regions, which is shown here. Uh, yeah, I overlap this, sorry. But uh, pretty much like if you get the pain cancer peak sets, you're going to have like start, the chromosome start and end, the name of the peak, and the score of it, okay? Uh, and the last important file is this lookup table for this J samples. So majority of the samples here, I, they have a, a label using a Stanford U, UID, but like all the metadata from TCJ is using what we call a TCJ barcode. I can explain a little bit later. Uh, but one of the things you're going to need is to get this table, get this prefix or the Stanford UID, and then map to a TCJ ID if you wanna get uh, information from GDC. The last data available is um, the big week files. They are like if you click here, then you have like a big file. Like for each replicate, you have a big file, a big week file. Um, and that's pretty much what the data we have. Okay. Um, so just going, giving an overview of the workshop. First thing we're comparing ESC, ESC, SAD. As I said, doing a t-test, uh, we're going to plot is a volcano plot, and then 
define which are the regions that are significant. So the word are like give a cutoff both for the t test p value and both the estimate. Okay, so like one of the regions that are significant and more open. Then we're going to visualize as a heat map, and then we have some code for doing visualizing the big wig files. I'm not going to cover that, I'm just going to show the code here. Um, but another way you can do that is using some web browsers. I'm going to show an example later. Okay, um, I'll go through the code, but just showing here the t-test, you just, you're going to have the data, then you're going to split it into those two groups, the squamous and the deno. So here it's the index of those in like a matrix. Then you do like a t-test over um, all the rows or all the peaks. Um, and then with that result, you do a volcano plot, as I said, you just get the ones that are significant and we're going to do a heat map, okay, of those to visualize <clears throat> if the results make sense or not. Uh, finally, you can do like a plotting of those regions here um, using R. Here's just an example where I have a region that has a peak for EAC, but I don't have for ESCC. Okay, um, that's pretty much what the workshop is going to do. Okay, so if you go to the R Markdown file that's available within the, the Google Drive folder, as I said, in here. Where is it? Okay, this file, okay. Um, you can download the data, uh, you can have like this file and then you have like all the code you needed. Uh, first of all, we started by loading the libraries we're going to use here. Um, so I'm using RStudio, uh, here is the code and the bottom is like a terminal where you can just run an R session. Um, then we have a code where if you don't have the libraries, you can just run it and install the ones that are missing. Okay, uh, just going through complex heat maps used for the heat map plotting and circleized also. Uh, to by links, we're going to use to gather metadata information from those samples. Apply R and deploy R, tie R. I think they're mainly for like doing loops or uh, handling the data. Genomic ranges, we're going to use to look for overlap between regions. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to do in this workshop is understanding the data, as I said, I think that's the initial step. So we're going to download here um, the ASCA specific picks and just to show how many rows we have, we have 127K uh, picks for the ACC. Like the score ranges from 1.8 until 1400, okay? And then we're compare that with the um, pain cancer peak set. Great. So you can see like the pain cancer peak set, I also have some of the peaks that are ACC. But if you run this code uh, here, you're going to take a look like within the, the pain cancer peaks, like how many are ACC, how many are bladder, how many are breast, how many are colon cancer, how many are glioblastoma, specific ones. Um, so this code just, it's a splitting. Okay, so we get the name here, remove everything from the right, just kept everything from the, the left and do a count using plier count. Okay, great. Um, then just take a look on the score, the range from the score goes from one to 2,500. Um, in the pain cancer specific set. Great. Um, now we're going to compare, okay? Um, if we do, first of all, we're going to create, get this table here. It's a data frame, a table, actually. You can convert it to a data, uh, ranges using this function from the genomic ranges library. It's called make ranges from data frame, which is simply, if you have sick names starting in, it's going to automatically uh, identify it and then say, okay, keep it the extra columns. So like score, annotation, these are going to keep kept, okay? 
So just to show quickly what my data looks like. So now it's a G ranges, okay? And then um, we're going to look for the overlap. So my question here is, does I do I have an overlap between the the ASCA and the pain cancer? And the answer is like yes. So just, just to recall, right, we had um, 127 uh, ASCA specific peaks in the cancer type. It's overlapping almost overall with the pain cancer. But in the pain cancer, we just have um, 1,300, 13,000 peaks. So we have like 10, almost 10% 10 of it, right? Um, okay, great. So what we wanna do right now is just checking, I just got one example where I have like two peaks overlapping from different cancer types. Just, as I said, we're just going to keep the one that has the highest score, the most significant one. So here's an example. Um, so from the pain cancer, I have this ACC 10, uh, 10008, which is in chromosome two, and it starts like 11, 25, 41, 6, 6, 1, okay? And I have a square 25. So this peak is overlapping with the ASCA peak, right? Um, so just to show here, I have a ASCA peak, 17603. Okay, it's on the same region, so it's chromosome two, 11, 25, 41, 6, 49. So they are somehow overlapping, okay? And then they decided to keep this one because if you like, take a look on the score of the ACC, it's lower. So they said, okay, this peak is uh, ACC specific and not ASCA, okay? Simply because it has a higher uh, open, openness, right? Higher toxic signal. Um, so the next code here is just showing that we have like almost the 581 base pairs um, within all peaks of those two G ranges, as we said. And then we're going to the next steps, okay? So we look for the peaks, we try to understand what they mean. Then we're going to get the data and do some plottings and visualizations. So we're going to get the ASCA log two normalized counts. So we just read here, it's again, we have like the peak chromosome, start and end, the name of the peak, the score of that peak, and then we have, um, let me just show, we have the two replicates here, okay? So T1 and T2 are each one, like this is one sample and two replicates, they have the same prefix but uh, the only thing that is different is like then it's T1, P4 is 24 and T2, P26, great. Um, and now what we are going to do is, as I said, we wanna map this to TCJ barcodes. Um, so first code here, we are getting that table from GDC with the pain prefix, Stanford UID, and then TCJ. And then what we're going to do is grab the sample name, okay, grab this, match this to this column. Um, that's what we do here, okay. Match to this column here, pain prefix. And then like, imagine this is equivalent to the third row and then get the, the TCJ ID from the third row, okay? Um, one thing that we did here is we just sub, okay? So we substitute the underscore for the sample name to uh, a dash, I have it. Yeah, I don't, I don't recall the name in English, sorry. Um, so we just get grab this, change this for the same as the file and then just map, okay? The just match. Match the, the sample, find here which row is it, and then just guess the, the column. 
Uh, one thing that we did was to get only the 16 first characters from the TCJ. The main reason is like TCJ barcode, just to explain a little bit, if you're not aware uh, what's a TCJ barcode. Uh, so the barcode is going to identify pretty much every single sample in the database and it has a meaning. Uh, it starts five four codes of the project, so it's DCJ. Then you have the tissue source site, um, where the tissue came from, and then you have the participant, which is like a person. Okay, so imagine I had cancer uh, three times. I had like breast cancer and bladder cancer. So I'm going to have one unique identifier, and then the, the two cancers are going to defer here, okay? Um, and here it defines the sample. Uh, okay, so the sample means like zero one here means it's a primary solid tumor. If it's zero two means a recurrent sample. And if it's like 10 on 11, I don't recall very much. There's a table where I can take a look on those codes. It means the normal sample. Uh, and then you have some other informations that might be useful. But uh, normally we use this initial part here to get like um, information about the patient. That's what you're going to do here. Um, so let's just run this and let just take a look right now. We just renamed it all the samples. Um, one thing that I lost here was like if it was replicate one or two, but I'm going to add later, but just show here the first two are from the same patient. Great. Um, then just take a look what we're going to do here. Okay, so right now we are going to put all the information together into a data structure that's called summarized experiment. Like this. Let me just show a photo here. Um, yeah, this one is better. Okay, so in the R bioconductor world, we have this data structure that's called summarize experiment. And that's like a container for when you want to handle data, metadata and metadata from like both the patient and both the, the genes, for example, okay? So imagine here, what we're going to do is we have our peak counts, right? So we're going to add the counts in this central matrix here that is accessible using this function called assay. Uh, the patient information, like age, gender, we're going to save in another table. And the information about the peaks are going to save on this table. So like peak one, score, um, and other information, okay? That's what we're going to do in these steps. Um, First thing I do is using TJ by links, as I said, I give the barcodes of the samples, the patients, which is I just grab this and give to bio uh, TJ by links. And it's going to give me the clinical data about each patient, okay? So like, okay, patient one, this is my patient. It's a primary solid tumor. Um, I have the stage of the disease. I have days to last follow up, the, the age of diagnosis in days. Um, I have gender somewhere. Yeah, race here, I have gender, etc. Great, and I also have the information that we wanna here is like the, let me just find here. Yeah, the di diagnosis of that cancer, if it's squamous or adenocarcinoma. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. We're just mapping and creating this map. Uh, we're adding a prefix for its sample, saying if it's ESCC or ASAG. Um, Pretty much that's it. Um, and then we're going to map these ones to the initial ones and just rename our 
um, data set. Okay, so we just add this prefix in the initial columns. Uh, and then we're going to create the matrix in the middle. We just have the counts. So just recall, we have this metadata here in the beginning, second name, star name. We're going to remove that, okay? Um, and we're going to get this and transform into a G ranges. So it's going to be our matrix in the left here and create our summarized experiment using that. Okay, so just to show, we have our summarized experiment. As I said, you can take a look, if I write like assay, three to four, we access the counts. If we, we want the information for the regions, you just type row ranges, okay? Then you have the each peak, we can see that's matching, right? Information. And if you want the samples information, just go and do call data. And then you have like, um, you can see like CJ IG, CJ IG, they match the main reason they did that summarized experiment was like some people, when they merged the information between metadata and data, they were doing mistakes in the code. They removed the wrong sample or just they did the wrong merge. Um, so this, is going to verify for the samples metadata using the same order. The last step here, I'm adding just a postfix. Yeah. Just saying if it's replicate one or replicate two. Okay. I just randomly assign as replicate one and replicate two. Um, Okay, now we're going to do our comparison, ESCC versus ESAD. Uh, first thing, we take a look um, which are the columns that are ESC or ES ESAD. Uh, you could either do it by the prefix in the name or you can just go through the... the metadata and then just compare if it's squamous, if it's like equal or the other. Then we do this uh, for those that are not familiar with the dplyr the, the function. Pretty much you give like a matrix and then you select if you wanna do by rows, which is one or by columns, which is two. So here we're going to do by row. Okay, so for each peak, and that's what, I, okay, for each peak, do a t-test. Are the counts, uh, from ESC versus ESAD, okay? Um, then you just return a data frame or a table as uh, with the p-values and the difference of s -made. Okay, um, I'm just going to run here instead of everything, just quickly, just to show the first time. Yeah, I didn't set parallel, that's fine. And then we're going to have something like this. Okay, my peak, p-value, and the difference, okay? And then you can correct for FDR. Um, I have already saved those results, so I'm just going to load this. Unless it was going to take like five minutes to run, we don't want that. So let me just take a look if it's okay. Okay, now I have all peaks analyzed and I have FDR also calculated. Great, now we're going to take a look on a Volcano plot. So we define the FDR cutoff, the diff, uh, the difference cutoff, and I'm using JBiLinks, which has a function called JVisualizeVolcano. You can use ggplot to do that. You don't need to run this code, it's just a wrapper around it. Um, and then by running this, you're going to have that heat map that we showed in these lights. Oh. Uh oh. Let me just take a look again. If the data is correct. Okay. Okay. This was said, this was said, and then you have a problem. Oh, great. <laughs> Let me try again. 
Otherwise, I'm just going to save the, the data. Yeah, it, it was running yesterday. Okay, I think now it's, it should work. Not sure what happened. Let's see, it might take a while to plot and that's okay. So right now we're going to get those two regions, the ones that are in red and green. Uh, so the volcano plot, just explaining briefly, it's going to have you two axes, right? It's a scatter plot. Um, and then you have the F log 10 FDR on the Y axis and then the log two difference in the X axis here. Um, the ones in red means they are higher, like higher score in the ESCC when compared to ESAD. And the other side is pretty much the opposite, okay? It's like more open ESAD compared to ESCC. Then what we're going to do now is visualize that as a heat map. So you use complex heat map and circleized. You select like the color ramp here. Um, then you have the heat map annotation. So the heat map, you have like the central matrix with the data and then you can, like, can add like um, annotations on the left of the heat map or on the top. So here I'm drawing the top annotation. Let's see, just I can just draw the annotation just to show quickly instead of just the, the matrix. Let me just clean this. Yeah, it's pretty much the annotation you're going to have. You're going to understand a little bit better. But I'm annotating here two things. The group, so if it's squamous or adeno, and the second one, it's which is the replicate. So in this heat map, we're going to plot like the both replicates. Great, and then in this line here, I only select the significant peaks, the ones that were red and green in our heat map. So I pretty much like get the matrix, get the results and just get the ones that I have this cut off. Great, we define the color scale. Um, I'm not going to show this, I'm going to remove this. Okay. Just run this and then we're going to plot. It might take a while. You're going to know something weird here. Um, the differences are not going to be that feasible. Although it is a little bit. Um, the main reason of that is like imagine I have a peak that goes from five to eight. I don't know, let, let's get one big one. Like, it goes from 100 to 110, and here it goes from uh, 0 to 1, okay? Um, so if you do that and set like the bigger ones as red, this is going to be very red and this is going to be very blue. Um, and that's why we normally do, instead of like doing log two counts, we do um, a z-score for a visualization, okay? Um, so the z-score, it's going to center our data. So get one peak, get the mean of that peak, or the median if I'm wrong, and set a zero. And, and then the other peaks are going to be either left or on the right, right? It's just how dispersed are then from the, the median. And then it's going to be easier for you to visualize, to visualize the difference. Um, and that's what we do in the next step. We do a row-wise z-score. Uh, major difference is instead of plotting the counts, we do this. We do a scale on the rows. So the scale function only works on the columns. That's why we have to, have to transpose it. Um, then you do redo the coloring, right? We want to just color now by z-score from minus two to two. Um, because right now we have negative values. <coughs> and I forgot to erase the annotation. Just one second. It's plotting the same heat map. Yeah, so, sorry for that. Um, yeah. 
and now you should have your z-score and the visualization should be better so as I said we're looking for let's just wait a little bit uh, the ones that are either open in the deno or either open in the squamous so that's where we did our cutoff here okay so I want the peaks to be significant and absolute difference to be higher than our cutoff which is two and that's um, the heat map um, and then the next code we have is like we have replicates imagine you want to merge it the way you can merge it's just grabbing the mean like I have two replicates for that sample get the peak and get the mean of those instead of having two different scores and that's what this function is doing here um, then another thing that I need to do the metadata since I had like two replicates I had like the double of metadata I had to just grab one um, and then you can plot again as either a count log two counts again I forgot to erase it or as a z-score yeah ignore the 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 plot that's coming here uh, I'm not like detailing every single part of the code because if you go for the like complex map library you have all the parameters explain it or you can just come here and type uh, interrogation question question mark and plus the name of the function then you have like a description of all the fields great uh, then this is our merged heat map. I will still have the same um, scenario, right? As expected. Okay, um, I'm not going through the next codes. I'm just to explain to you a little bit what they are doing. Um, the first one is getting all TCG cancer specific picks. Pretty much, I go to the folder, get the zip file. I unzip it and then I'll go through and change all the names for TCJ yeah just from UID Stanford UID to TCJ uh, let's just wrap up if you want to like do a pain cancer analysis this might not be very useful and then I just added some codes where I was able to create the data that's inside the Google Drive folder pretty much is um, the first thing is get the bigwig files we change the name from Stanford UID to TJ bar UID uh, one thing that I did as I said I removed it I kept just chromosome 20 just to be a little bit easier for you to handle and the way I did that was using a couple of USC tools one's called bigwig to wig the first thing is just like okay grab my bigwig and kept just the chromosome 20 and then convert back to bigwig that's pretty much what um, I have done here and then a way to visualize that in R I'm not going through this and here is just an example where we got our, our Elmer result analysis where I have a CPG dynamic inflation in enhancer region and it's regulating um, a target gene here and you can see like the promoter region is open pretty much for all tumor types but the promote the enhancer region is mainly open for EAC, EAC. Um, so we would be expecting that the target gene expression here is regulated by the enhancer region not very much for the promoter um, yeah last thing I want to show is you can also use the WashU Epsilon browser Let's see if I can go back. So if you go, instead of using R to visualize those peaks, you can just go to either IGV, Wash Y on Browser. I'm not sure if there's a better one today. But it's just show a little bit what you can do. You come to tracks. You can say, okay, local tracks. You, you're, we are using human HG38. You can change here. Um, and then you can choose the files you want to show. So if I go to the data folder, as I said, you have like 
the big rig files. Um, you select the ones. Okay, I had a six tracks, and I have the peaks here. Um, one thing here, the y-axis is different. I think you can. Um, you can smooth the peaks um, a little bit if you want, just show a little bit better, like less uh, squared results. Then I'm going to increase a little bit the window, okay, the height of the, the peaks here. And then I'm going to set the same peaks for everyone. So like this one was then we're going to put like 200 okay for everyone um, when it's reddish here it's because above it but then you have the same scale at least on everyone here i think igb has another way of showing this normalization then you can just change the color so let's say this is esad esad the other one's a scc you just change the primary color let's say red or something like that then you can do this um, I think you can drag like let's put the red together you can do something like this instead of using our which sometimes it might be um, easier and faster okay um, I think that's what we had to present today. Thank you very much. I hope you appreciate the, the workshop. If you have any questions, I think you can post um, on YouTube, but uh, I would prefer if you send me an email. Uh, you can find my email on the internet, pretty much just write my name. I have some art packages um, and there should be my contact for everything. Like I'm, I'm the main developer of TJ by Links and Elmer, and I have a couple of workshops here that are might also be useful for you. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.